spent one week in um, New Delhi and one week in Thailand. Um, I'm still a little jet lag. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to stay up for this whole fight tonight. You know, I might have to crash out here backstage for a little bit just so I'm well rested, man. Trust me, man. Jet lag is worse than 12 rounds of boxing. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what nobody says, man. It does something to your head, man. I mean, it makes you feel all foggy. It, it's not a pleasant feeling, man. But um, it is great to be back. Actually, my um, first night back, I got in at 11:30 at night before. I finished grabbing my bags and putting them into the hotel room. I was outside of the hotel, and a young woman said to me, she goes, aren't you that boxer? So uh, I know New York got love for your boy one time. It's, it's really great to be back in this uh, city where they love boxing and they, and they love what I do, and I get respect around town, man. Um, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I love the Barclays. I love New York. Um, it got cold yesterday. It's not that cold today. A little, little bipolar, a little emotional right now. But, uh, but it's good, man. I haven't even been back home yet. I haven't seen my family yet. So after I'm done with New York, I'll get back to see my oh, family. So and that's going to be a, a, a pleasant thing as well. So you got married and then you've been over there. You just getting back? Yeah, man, because um, I did. A, I got to do two things. Kill two birds with one stone. We're gonna. I got to make an appearance here for the fans. Um, and for you guys and just just to be around boxing again plus I got to see my doctor when I got into town I got into town on Monday night I saw my doctor Wednesday morning and I'm gonna do my last checkup with him uh, Monday before I leave on Tuesday so we're killing two birds with one stone I've been doing some um, therapy every day except for today I'll be working with my therapist tomorrow and Monday from uh, HSS hospital and we just multitasking man but yeah man I'm here seeing y'all before I go see my mama man so Hey, man, I, I hope y'all appreciate that. I saw you at the, <laughs> the podcast yesterday from Brooklyn to the World with Paulie. I was at the table with y'all, man. I've always wanted to ask, have you guys ever <laughs> spoke about the infamous Don't Duck Me Son? <laughs> <laughs> Not Duck Me Son? <laughs> oh, that was but Have you ever classic. joked about it classic. now since that time has Duke come? Dutta Wilder. We don't name Dutta Wilder right huh? now. Dutta Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, the moment that that manifested, right? Pauli Milanagi was the WBA walkerweight champion of the world. As soon as he lost the title to Adrian Broner, I had no intentions of gunning for him no more. I was, you know, like the fighters today, like like many people calling me out right now, okay? Mm -hmm. I was calling out whoever was champion, right? That's what happens when you try to come up through the ranking. You want to fight the best. You want to fight the champs. He was a champ once when he wasn't the champ. I didn't even, I, there's nothing to talk about no more, you know, and no fight contracts ever got proposed. And he actually admitted yesterday, he said he wasn't really trying to take it. <laughs> so if he did, Speaking if, the devil. Hey, yeah, right there. Uh, Don't duck me, son. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, the, if he would have stayed uh, uh, winning, then maybe there would have been an opportunity for him to legitimately duck me or not duck me. But like I said, man, you know, that's why I don't really like talking about what ifs in boxing because all that matters is what is, but not what is not. You know what I mean? 